these bring me so much joy. They shouldn't, but they do. Hi there, my name is Anne, and in this video I'm gonna make something which I have been wanting to do for a very long time, and that is make pins out of shrink plastic. I'm of course inspired by Mariah Elizabeth, who made a video, a couple videos actually, about shrink plastic a while ago, and they became really, really huge, like they had millions of views, like all of her videos. But I really liked that idea, and I wanted to do it also, so I finally bought some shrink plastic and I'm gonna make some pins out of it. Now what is shrink plastic? Shrink plastic is a sheet of plastic that you can draw on. It has a smooth and a rough side and when you draw on the rough side you can cut it out and put it in the oven and it will shrink like the name suggests. <laughs> and it's really cool because you can make loads and loads of stuff out of it. You can make earrings out of it, you can make a keychain out of it, you can make charms even bracelets I've seen people do, and as I've said, pins, which is what I'm gonna do. There are loads of different kinds of shrink plastic. I have seen um, neon ones, I have seen pastel ones, and I have seen clear ones. I have white ones because they were just way cheaper than the clear ones, so that's what I'm using today. The clear ones are easier to use because they are clear, so you can see your design through it very easily. I will have to use a light pad for me to be able to see my design that I will sketch beforehand but it's still usable and it's still gonna work great so I am really looking forward to and before I did my other designs I actually sketched out the YouTube logo button and I did that as a test piece and I'm very glad that I did a test piece because this was a straight triangle <laughs> This is quite clearly a rectangle. <laughs> like obviously it had curves instead of like square, I don't know how you say this, a pointy angle, <laughs> I think, I don't know. And um, it didn't came out exactly like I wanted. And this is done with colored pencils. And then I did it again with a Posca pen and it turned out way better. Also beforehand I made some rulers, like I made this one first, which this was my very first time using shrink plastic and as you can see it's not very straight like <laughs> I didn't put it in the oven for long enough and then I also made this I forgot the word for it I'll put it on the screen but this thing <laughs> another ruler just so that I could see if it would shrink differently um, in both directions and it does shrink differently one side shrinks more than the other so you should really make a test piece like this to see how much your shrink pl plastic shrinks because that's kind of important because it could mess up your design in an unpleasant way but now that i have that out of the way i can start making my designs and the first thing that i'm gonna do is sketch out my designs that i want onto a piece of paper and the first design that i'm gonna make is a cute little avocado I really really love avocados like I just love it when they make chibi versions of it and so I wanted to make one so I just googled a picture of cute avocados and I used that as reference for my image and I redrew my avocado a bunch of times trying to find the right size and stuff but in the end I probably did it a little bit too small but it still looks kind of cute next up is my cactus and this is just a standard cactus that I think everybody knows and I just want to address, I know it's kind of weird that it's in a pot, but still I drew it in a pot because I thought that it would be adorable. And I gave it a little bit of spikes at the edges, like the corners of my cacti, so that it would look a little bit more spiky. <laughs> Next is the Icon Draw Circle Spin that is actually from Chloe Rose Art. I really, really love her art. And I just, I always loved this pin, but I never got it, so I wanted to recreate it. So this is absolutely not an original idea. This is completely ripped off of Chloe Rose art. But I just really love her and I really wanted this pin, so I remade it. And yeah, I just, I think it's really funny that I'm drawing a circle as badly as I can. <laughs> This next one is just one that I had to do. I just, I, I had to put at least one dinosaur in it because 
they are freaking adorable. <laughs> like you always see these pins and like stickers and stuff of like these cute, tiny, adorable dinosaurs like raw and stuff. And I just really, really wanted one. And I went with this one and I gave it little dots on its back and with a tail. But I'm kind of afraid of how this will go in the oven, but that's a problem for later. So right now I'm just sketching it out. And I just, I think this might be my favorite one because just of how adorable it is. And I'm sorry, but I just had to put something of Harry Potter in this video because I really love the books and I just, I will always be a Potterhead. So I <laughs> made the Mischief Managed uh, pins. I recreated it. This is actually also an existing design that they sell, but I thought I'm making this. I'm not selling it for anything, so I'm gonna make it for my own, which I really, really like. So if you don't know what this is, um, they have the Moroders map, and don't ask me how to pronounce that correctly. I probably said it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they have the Moroders map, and once you're done with what you need to look at on the map, you have to say Mischief Managed. And so I recreated it on the little footsteps that also appear on the map. And I just, I really love this pin. And I'm so glad that we made this design. Next up is also something that I find quite adorable and I just love seeing everywhere and that is like a little ghost and I don't know why I just think it's adorable so I I searched up little ghost or like ghost pin or something and I gave it arms to be like it's chasing you or something but it's just a friendly little ghost and I just I love this design so much. And I'm going along with the theme of making cute pins because I'm making a cute planet. <laughs> and when I say cute, I basically mean just putting faces on things that normally don't have faces. <laughs> That's basically my default of drawing cute things. But I just, I love little planets and I really wanted a pin like that. So I just drew a circle and I gave it a ring and then I drew a face on it. And when I will color it in, I will give it like different kinds of color. It won't be just one colored planet. But I didn't want to include that in the sketch because if I want to change it, then I can change it later on. I can make multiple different planet pins. So it's just like a base for my planet so that I can draw on it later. And last but certainly not least, I am drawing a Monstera leaf. This is the plant that you will probably see everywhere if you like doodle stuff and if you just like plants like me. When I say I like plants, I mean I like to look at it. I'm terrible at keeping them alive so why don't just draw one instead and that way I can keep it forever without messing it up <laughs> but anyway so this is a monstera leaf and it has little holes in it and I just I love those plants and I love the leaf of it obviously that's why I'm drawing it but it's just a fun little drawing and I think it's a nice one to close off with Okay, now that the sketching is done, I can start with the coloring of these pins. And I'm using a scrap piece of plastic because it's good to use up all your scrap pieces and not waste any. The piece of plastic has two sides to it, a smooth side and a rough side. When you'll use it, you'll see immediately which side it is and you should draw on the rough side of your plastic. And I'm starting off with the I can draw circle spin because that's the easiest. It's just black and yeah, that's the easiest, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm using Posca pens for this because honestly it's easy to get a nice outline with it. You can also use color pencils and other markers, I don't know which ones. I know that Poscas work really really great for this. I mean, other people have told me, so I believe them. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going over the outline first, like the outer circle, and then I'm doing the letters. And if my handwriting is bad, I'm sorry, but at least I can read it and that's the important thing. And Poscas do have this annoying habit to like skip a little bit and like eject some of the ink out of it when you don't want it. So that's kind of annoying. You have to really make sure that you're using the right rotation of your Posca pen so that they will work great. And I suggest keeping a scrap piece of paper next to you while you're doing this so that you don't ruin your designs and you should always test your Posca pens beforehand because as I said you could ruin your piece by this. Next up is the little ghost and he is just adorable I think <laughs> and I'm doing it different this time than the first pin because this time 
I'm also obviously drawing the outlines, but I'm also coloring it in with a Posca pen. So like I'm coloring the white parts in to see if that will give a difference or not. And it ends up actually giving a big difference because one, you can erase your mistakes, which is very important. When you just have the blank piece of plastic and you draw on a white Posca pen to fix your mistake, it leaves a little mark and you can see the white Posca because it's different white from the plastic after it bakes. So it's really handy to color it also in with Posca if you want to <laughs> clear up your mistakes. And speaking of mistakes, I made a mistake at the end of this pin because I placed my hand on the still wet Posca and I smudged it. At least it was on the outside of the pin so I can just cut it away. But oh my god, please be careful when you use Poscas and make sure that they're dry before you go over with the next pen because I will make this mistake a lot of times in this video. <laughs> And the next pin is going to be the cactus pin. I'm using a brown and a red for the pot because I know that the red will darken a lot in the oven. And I did end up changing the design a little bit because I originally had um, drawn spikes on the outside of the cacti, cactus, but that didn't really look great, I think. I thought it would be very annoying to cut out. In the end it didn't matter but i changed the design and i ended up putting lines in the cactus part itself and then giving it just a little spikes on the top of the arms of the cactus and then i had a little bit of space left and i squeezed the avocado in it on the same piece of plastic and the avocado was fairly simple i just put brown in it for the nut and then two kinds of green for the avocado part itself and i decided that i was gonna do it in two parts these pins so i was gonna do these first four pins first and put them in the oven separately and once they turned out good i would move on to the next pins just so that i could get a feel of it and so that it would go great because i didn't know how it would go so i did it in two parts now, the oven looks more scary than it actually ended up being. <laughs> it is totally nerve-wracking to put your pins in there because it can go wrong, but most of the time it won't go wrong. It will shrivel up in weird ways and you just have to let it be. It will turn out alright. Like, I was very afraid to mess these up and they turned out fine. And so my instructions were that I had to put the oven at 150 degrees Celsius, let them sit in the oven for three minutes and then pull them out and flatten them with something. And I used an acrylic block for like stamps and stuff to flatten my pins and that's really, really handy. If you have one of those, use it. It's really, really handy for this. And I just did them one by one. You can do them together, but I found it <laughs> a little bit more easier on myself if I did it one by one because then I wasn't as stressed but you can totally do them together but I just thought that it was easier doing them one by one okay and now it's time to move on to the next batch of pins and I'm starting off with the dinosaur and this is where I learned the most about Poscas and shrink plastic together because I did the purple dots first and that was a mistake. <laughs> I should have done the blue first completely and also colored in where the purple dots would be. And then when the blue was dry, I should have gone over the purple dots because I ended up correcting some of them in the end because they disappeared almost because I had to go around the area of the little dots, which was annoying. <laughs> and because I corrected it, it became too many layers. And I will show you once I've put it in the oven that the top becomes kind of fuzzy. I, I will show you when it's done, but you shouldn't layer it too much. Some people on YouTube say that you shouldn't go over your design with your Posca more than once. And I disagree with that. I think if your Posca is still wet, you can go over it again, just to make sure that you filled in all the areas. And once it's dry, you can go over it like once and you'll be fine, but more than two layers is too much I have found so do with that what you will but that's what I found works the best for me and so yeah now let's move on to the next design and the next design was the most difficult of them all 
oh mischief managed how much i love you but hate you at the same time and this is where i should have learned a little bit more and just trusted that it would turn out all right because i did the brown first of the mischief managed and then i filled in the black i should have just filled in the black and then put the mischief managed over it in brown but i was afraid of the layering so i didn't do that but i think that it would have turned out all right and honestly this would have probably been way easier in colored pencils <laughs> And oh look, here is my head in frame because I was so afraid of doing the black outside of the mischief managed outside of the letters. So you're gonna see my head a lot of times in this pin. After a couple of touch-ups later on, it's gonna look great. I'm really, really happy with how this pin turned out, but the execution could have been better. <laughs> but anyway, the next pin is going to be the planet, which I really should have been more patient with this Pin. The amount of times I put my hand in still wet Posca pins is basically endless. <laughs> the amount of touch-ups I had to do because I was so impatient. Have more patience, Anne. <laughs> I went with this blue for the ring and then purple and pink for the planet itself to give it a pastel kind of look. And then I used red for the cheeks and black for the eyes. And I really, really like how this color scheme turned out. I think it's just a really cute pin and I absolutely love how the colors go together. I'm really proud of this pin. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is the Monstera leaf pin. This pin is kind of easy. It just light green and dark green not very difficult but here is where my Bosca pen kind of messed up and this wasn't my fault it was a Bosca pen fault and this is why it is important that you should always use a spare sheet of paper to test out your pens beforehand don't press down on the actual shrink plastic to get more inked press down on a piece of paper that you don't care about because otherwise this can happen which isn't ideal and it went outside the lines so I had to clean it up and it was a whole thing. <laughs> but in the end it turned out just fine. I outlined it with a dark green Bosca pen and I really loved how that looked. So I'm really happy with the spin in the end. And here is how they look cut out. I did mess up a little bit on the dinosaur and I'm hoping that it won't matter. It has a little tear at the legs. You can't really see it but I'm hoping that it will just be fine in the oven and after a round in the oven they look great I'm really really happy with it and this is what I was talking about with the dinosaur if you look at the purple dots they're like are kind of fluffy and they've grown hairs they're not actually hairs don't worry <laughs> but it's just a kind of messed up so you really should look out for the layering but they turned out just fine and here is what the pins look like compared to their original size. And look how adorable they are in tiny. I am so happy with these pins. <laughs> and now it's time for a layer of varnish. And you can see me struggling when I'm opening this bottle of varnish. Which is just great. <laughs> I just gave all of the pins two coats of varnish. Just so that I could be sure that the Posca pins were secure and hold in place. And I totally didn't put my fingers a lot of times in varnish. Totally didn't do that. No, no, not at all. <laughs> and after the varnish comes the thing that's really gonna make them look like pins, which is this Dimensional Magic by Mod Podge. It is this thing that tries to mimic resin, but then safe, like without the actual dangerous parts of resin, which is really, really cool. You just let it air dry and overnight it will dry and it's really, really great. It was kind of tricky to work with it because there would be a lot of bubbles in the dimensional magic. I didn't shake it but there were just a lot of bubbles in my bottle so I had to like poke it with my tweezers and I'm so sorry if my head is in frame again. It just there were a lot of bubbles and I wanted to make sure that they were all gone. <laughs> And now comes the final step of making these pins, which is putting on the backings. I'm using this glue called Felpen, it's a Dutch all-purpose glue. 
I don't recommend using this glue <laughs> because I ended up changing it afterwards because the pins came loose. I ended up buying E6000 glue after I tried different options of glue and either buy jewelry glue, is that how you pronounce it? Jewelry glue or the E6000 glue, I don't know which other glue works but I have tried a lot of things and the E6000 seems to work pretty dang great so I ended up using it off screen when I had to fix all my pins because all of them came loose with the Velpen. So don't use this glue. <laughs> and after letting them dry overnight, the pins are finished. I absolutely love how these look. I think they look great. Are they perfect? No, absolutely not. Do I care? No, absolutely not. They are just amazing and they look so great and they're so cute together and I'm definitely going to make more of them because I am obsessed with this stuff. Shrink plastic has just so many possibilities and I am going to make so much more stuff with it. I just, I love how these look. My favorite one is probably the dinosaur and it's just because just of its face and it looks so adorable, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm just really glad that I made these pins and I'm so glad that you watched this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please leave it a like and if you liked watching me, please consider subscribing to me. I'm having a lot of fun making videos and I'm definitely going to revisit Shrink Plastic very soon. But that's all for now. So thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye!